Hello and welcome back to Probability Theory. And as always, first I want to thank all the nice people that support this channel on Steady or PayPal. Now in today's part 10, we will talk about so-called random variables. First, they might sound complicated, but actually they are very simple and natural. We just want to put all the relevant information of a random experiment into one object. And usually, for such objects, we use capital letters, for example, capital X. Now soon we will see that this capital X is just a map defined on the sample space omega with some special properties. Indeed, often here the codomain is simply given by the real number line R. However, in a moment I will show you how we can naturally generalize this to another set of values. And of course, we will also discuss the properties we need for such a map. But before we do this, let's first discuss a simple example. So what we could do is, as often, throwing two dice and maybe we have a red one and a green one. Hence we can distinguish the dice, which means this is the same as throwing one die twice. Therefore, you should immediately be able to write down the probability space, because this is exactly what we discussed in the last video. So the sample space omega is the Cartesian product of 1 to 6 with itself, and the sigma algebra A is just a power set. And then, without writing down the explicit definition, we can simply say P is given by the uniform distribution. Okay, there you see, with this probability space, we have the whole information of this random experiment. So all the possible outcomes with the probabilities are given here. However, maybe we are in a situation where we are only interested in the sum of the two numbers the dice show. For example, we could be in a game where this is important and the colors of the two dice don't matter at all. Then, exactly in such a case, we would define a random variable. And as I told you before, we would simply call it x. Okay, so here we have a map from the sample space omega, which has all the possible outcomes of the two dice, to the real numbers. So what x should do, we already know, it should give us the sum of the two numbers. Hence a sample given by omega 1, omega 2 is mapped to the sum omega 1 plus omega 2. So you see, this is not a complicated map at all. What we can remember in this case is that the input is a sample and the output is a number. Okay, so this is a typical example of a random variable where you see it simply extracts the information we are interested in. Therefore, later we will work with a lot of random variables. However, first I would say we have to give the correct definition now. And as promised, this is the general definition one uses in probability theory. Okay, so what we need are two spaces we call measurable spaces or event spaces. The first one should be given by a set, a sample space omega, with the corresponding sigma algebra A. And then the second one is given by a set omega tilde with the corresponding sigma algebra A tilde. So you could say we have here probability spaces where the probability measure P is not fixed yet. Hence we are just interested in the events, the elements of a sigma algebra and therefore we talk of event spaces. However, in measure theory we would call these spaces measurable spaces. And in fact, the random variable we define now, we would call a measurable map. Nevertheless, as often in probability theory, we use some special names for these objects. Okay, now we consider a map we call capital X from one sample space omega into the other one omega tilde. And then this map is called a random variable if it's a measurable map in the measure theoretical sense. Which means we have to look at all the pre-images of the events in the second sample space omega tilde. Here let's denote an element of curved A tilde just with a normal A tilde. And then we know this pre-image of A tilde is a subset of omega. However, in the end, when we have a probability measure P, we want to measure these sets here. Hence it's necessary that this is not just a subset of omega, but also an element of the sigma algebra A. Therefore, this is exactly the right condition we need here for all A tilde. Okay, there we have it. This is the whole definition of a random variable, a concept we will need a lot. Therefore, I would say, let's immediately look at some examples. 
So maybe for the start, let's discuss the details of the random variable from above. There, the first event space was given by omega a, where omega is the sample space given by 1 to 6 squared, and a is just a power set. Moreover, the second event space was given by the real number line. Hence, this would be omega tilde. However, now we should ask, what is a tilde? In the end, I can already tell you, it will not matter at all, but usually when we have the real number line, we would take the Borel sigma algebra. Therefore, we also do this here. And now I can ask you, is this map from before, this x, actually a random variable? At first glance, it seems to be that we have to check a lot, because we need to check all the pre-images here. However, please recall, the sigma algebra A here is the whole power set. Hence, the condition we have to satisfy just tells us that the pre-image of any Borel set A tilde is a subset of omega, which is of course trivially fulfilled. This means that the definition of x does not matter at all when we have on the left hand side the whole power set as the sigma algebra. So in this case we can easily conclude that the map x is a random variable. Indeed, most of the time we won't have any problems at all fulfilling this condition here. Or to put it in other words, counterexamples are always very artificial. For example, you could take the same case again, but now we will change the power set here, so we take another sigma algebra A. Hence, instead of the largest one, the power set, we take the smallest one. So the only events we have in our sigma algebra A are the empty set and omega itself. Then of course we immediately find a counterexample, you just have to look at the pre-image of the singleton 2. In words this means the sum of the two numbers of the dice is exactly 2. So there's only one dice throw possible, the two dice show both 1. Therefore this pre-image is just a set with only one element. And that's the reason I chose 2 here, because then I don't have to write so much. And of course you immediately see the result, this set is neither the empty set nor the whole set omega. So it's not an element in the sigma algebra A. And then we can conclude, in this case x is not a random variable. Ok, now in summary what you should see here is, random variables are not complicated at all. And indeed, most of the time the fact that we have a random variable is immediately given. Ok, now I want to close this video with an important notation. Assume again that we have two measurable spaces, also called event spaces. Moreover, let's also fix two other things. First, we have a random variable x as before. And secondly, maybe not so surprising, we have a probability measure p, defined on the first event space on the left. This means when we take any set A tilde from the sigma algebra A tilde and look at the pre-image under X, then we can calculate the probability of this event. Simply because we know by the definition of a random variable that this set lies in the sigma algebra A. Hence P of this set makes sense. Therefore one usually uses a shorter but strange notation for this. One simply writes P of x in a tilde. First it looks a little bit odd, but you will see this a lot in probability theory. And indeed it makes a little bit more sense when you use the definition of the pre-image. Which is simply the set of all lowercase omega in capital omega, with the property that x of lowercase omega lies in a tilde. Hence you can see the left hand side as a shortcut for writing this whole set. The important thing you should remember here is that this literally does not make sense, but it stands for a whole set in omega. Please note, in the same sense, also other shortcuts as this are used as well. In more detail, we will discuss this in the next video. Therefore, I hope I see you there and have a nice day. Bye.